These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Let's start by reviewing the idea of power. Uh, do you happen to remember what the units are for power? That's a concept that we first saw last semester. Um, watts. Good, that's good that you remember that. But, do you remember what a watt is? What are the component units of a watt? Is it joules over something? So far, so good. Yeah, that's right. Any idea what the something might be? Over our area? Meter? Now, it turns out that, what, how would we describe the power in words? The power describes the rate that energy is being transmitted. That's right. So since it's a rate, we would think of it per second. The rate that the energy is transmitted is joules per second. Um, so beyond knowing the units, it's even more important just to know that power is representing the rate that energy is being transmitted. Okay, so that's our rate that uh, energy is being transmitted. And that's still a very important concept here in this chapter. Now, another important concept here is intensity. Uh, and now sometimes we use a capital I for intensity, and sometimes we use a capital S. So I should make it clear that this is lowercase s for seconds. Okay, uh, and there's a formula that lets us figure out the intensity if we know the power. Uh, so if you know the power, do you know what do you have to do to that to find the intensity? Go. You were guessing that we would go over area for this formula, but this is the formula um, where we put area on the denominator. So I'll use a capital I for intensity. Intensity is also a uh, concept that we saw last semester, but I think we're, uh, we're working with it a lot more this semester. So people should be pretty familiar with power, but a lot of people have forgotten about uh, intensity. All right, and basically the intensity is telling us how the power is spread over the area. The intensity is telling us how the, hour, uh, how, how the power has been spread out uh, over uh, the area. So let's suppose that we have, uh, let's see, a source of energy. And let's say that it's a point source. So we have a point source of energy. Well, we would ask, what rate is the energy being uh, transmitted from this point source? And that would be the power. So we might say that this is transmitting with a power of, uh, just to make something up, say 100 watts. So this could be like a 100 watt light bulb, a light bulb that's uh, transmitting 100 joules per second. So from this point, 100 joules per second are spreading out. Now, what's going to happen to the energy as it's carried away in the electromagnetic radiation? So, we, uh, so what we're thinking about here is sources of energy where the energy is transmitted as electromagnetic radiation. Well, what are the wave fronts going to look like? Well, for a point source, the wave fronts are going to be spheres. There's going to be spheres expanding from here. So here's one of those spheres. Anyway, here's a sphere of a wave front where the energy has gone out. I was trying to put this at the center, but it's not really at the center. Okay, now what's happened to this 100 watts of power? Well, the 100 watts of power is still there. It's just spread over this whole wave front. So this wave front still has 100 watts of power. It's just spread 
over a larger area. Now, this should really be a sphere, not a circle, but all I can draw on the blackboard is a circle. And then if you wait a while, the wavefront will expand even more. Now it's out to here. Now, how much power is spread, spread over this spherical wavefront? 100. 100 watts. Because we have conservation of energy. The energy can't just disappear. So if there was 100 watts originally, there's 100 watts here as well. So the first important point is that each of these wavefronts has the same power. Each of these wavefronts has the same power because they're all coming from the same source. That's conservation of energy. But do they all have the same intensity? So let's think about that. Which of, uh, which of these would have, I guess, uh, the uh, smallest intensity? The outer one. That sounds good. How do you know? Because it's a bigger area. OK, good. We still have 100 watts here. But here, the 100 watts has been spread over a very large area. So here, the uh, intensity would be low. Here, we have 100 watts. But the 100 watts is concentrated on a smaller area. So here, the intensity would be high. Uh, and at the point, the intensity would be huge because the power is spread over a tiny area. All right, so uh, here we have our various intensities. So how do we solve problems uh, like this? Well, a common way to solve a problem like this is maybe we are given suppose that we're given the intensity of this wavefront. If we're given the intensity of this wavefront, and then we might be asked to find the intensity of this wavefront. So if we're given this intensity, how can we find the intensity of this wavefront? What would be the steps? What's the first thing that we can figure out if we're given this intensity? Figure out the area. Yeah. The so I'd have to give you some more information. But if we knew this area, that would be helpful. And then what would we do with that? To figure out the power. And the power That's right. The we can, yeah, we can figure out the power here. So given this we could find the power of this wavefront, uh, as long as we knew the area over here using this formula. And you're right, that would tell us the power of this wavefront, because we just said that they have the same power. And then? Then you put that over area. Now we have to know the area of this wavefront, and that will tell us this intensity. All right, so this is a common type of problem. This is one of the things that we'll need for that homework problem that we're looking at. And there's a couple different steps that you need. But one thing we have to do is we're going to have to compare two different uh, distances from the source. OK, now remember this was a point source. So what shape are the uh, wavefronts taking? Um, circles. On the board, they're circles. But uh, in 3D, spheres. they'd be spheres. So we need to know the formula for the area of a sphere. I don't know if you happen to remember that. Is it four thirds pi r squared? Now, what are going to be the units for area? Square. Yeah, square, square meter. So that was a good guess. That should, that should be squared over there. Um, I think we got the, uh, the coefficients wrong, so let's four look that up. That sounds right. So let's look at the back of your textbook in the mathematical appendices so that you can find this on your own when you need it. Mathematical appendices. Okay, so your second guess was right. You might want to bookmark this page here because you might need other areas at different points. So in the back of your book is all the formulas we need. So the surface area of the sphere. Notice we don't want the volume of the sphere. That's where the four yeah. thirds comes in. Uh, we want the surface area of the sphere. 